All right, so for this particular project, when you go to today's Moodle page, of course, you can download the instructions. I've got five images you can download. For this project, you only have to do three of them. So when you click on them, you can download the pepper, the onion, the banana. Uh, let's see, I think I've already got some of them downloaded. Yep, they're on my desktop. So like this is the apple, the pepper. You can look at each one of them and see. Some of them are more difficult than others. Each has their own unique challenges. But you're only required for this project to do three of them. I will, however, give you 10 bonus points on any, uh, any project that you've turn on, turned in if you'll do the other two foods. So if you do all five of them, save them as a separate file, you can upload the bonus for an extra 10 bonus points on anything or any project that you've done. All clear on that? Just doing three. So let's jump in and actually show you how to set up the document. Again, we're working in Illustrator. This is essentially what we're creating. Here's the one that I did from the first class. Here's my photograph. Here's my apple that I created. Looks pretty close to realistic. It's not going to be 100%. Um, again, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. But again, you're getting a lot more nuance and shading within a single object. So I'm going to close this one out. We'll make a new document. <clears throat> Since we're using three of them, we're going to make three artboards. By the way, you can judge how you want your artboards to be set up by using these different arrows. In this case, if you want it to go zigzag by a row or up and down, or if you want to go straight across or straight down, this is where you can choose it to do this one. Everything else I'm going to keep the same, and the height and width is going to be a 5 by 5 So we'll say OK. And this is the way our document is going to be set up. And we need to place each of the images onto here. So I'm going to place, let's see, my apple, put it into here. Remember to hold down shift when you want to scale it. Get a little bit bigger. Place in the pepper, place in the onion. <clears throat> onion, right there. In keeping with any kind of tracing that we do in Illustrator, I always want my picture to be on one layer and my actual work to be on another layer. So in your layers palette, we're going to lock down layer one and we're going to make another layer on top of it. And we're going to be working in layer two. Here's the first thing to think about when doing these types of drawings. I want you to break it down into the simple shapes, the basic shape of everything. We don't want anything to be too small or too, uh, too detailed. So when I'm looking at this apple, I'm looking at the basic outline shape of the apple. I'm not even going to worry about the stem or, uh, or some of the smaller bits. I'm just going to do the apple shape. This is really important for something like this one. All of this could be one shape. All of this could be another shape behind it. The stem itself could be one shape and the uh, little area where it's connecting could be another shape. If you try to do everything all at once, it's going to get way, way too complicated. And the more complex it is, the more difficult, and it's just not going to look the way you want. Try to break it down into the simple parts. Even the onion. If I was to do this, I would just do the lower bulb part, and maybe I would do the stem as a separate object and deal with it separately as well. Another thing to kind of be thinking about is we're going to keep this very, very simple. And as far as the, uh, the way the tones go, later on you can go back in and add smaller details. But for the first part, we're just going to keep it as simple as possible. Let me show you how to do the apple, since that would be the, uh, the go-to one to work for. So I'm working on layer two. We're going to grab our pen tool. There it is. And I'm just going to set my fill to nothing, and I'll... I'll trace it off with a white line so I can see it. So very quickly, I'm going to retrace this. Remember, you can hit the space bar if you need to move a vector point around. Again, I'm not going to worry about this upper part. I'm just going to kind of cut it off right here for now. And we'll connect it back into there. So I've got my outline created. That's going to be one object to work with. <clears throat> Here's another little handy trick to know about Illustrator. You know your eyedropper tool allows you to pick up colors from what you have selected. So I've got, 
first of all, my outline selected. If I use my eyedropper tool and I click anywhere inside of this picture, it's going to pick up the fill color of wherever I'm clicking. So if I wanted to quickly colorize my outline to be red, well, I'm going to get this center red portion, and automatically it fills it in with the general color of that red. Pretty cool. Now to see this, once we start working in our gradient mesh, we need to be able to see both our outline and our picture. But first, let's make the gradient mesh to work on. Here's how to do this. Under Object, go down to Create Gradient Mesh. This will bring up another dialog box. And you can see what it's happening to your actual, um, your actual picture. It's dividing it up into rows and columns, and it's trying to follow the contour based on what your outline of the uh, outer shape was. So it's not just straight up and down, it's actually going to follow a little bit. You can adjust the amount of detail that you want. So if I need more rows, more columns, I can certainly add as many or as few as I need. Let's see, what did I ask y'all to do for this one? Eight by nine? So eight rows by nine columns. <clears throat> the more rows and columns you add, the more detail you'll have, but the more work you're going to have to put into it. So it's kind of a delicate balance between it. Everything else we're going to keep the same. We're going to keep it flat. We're not going to have to worry about uh, anything other part of the appearance. And we'll say OK to this. So here's what a gradient mesh allows you to do. So you've made a gradient that goes from one area and blends to another area. That's what this allows you to do with this one. You can use your direct selection tool, white arrow, and click on any one of these points and change the fill color within that point. And what the computer will do is it will uh, blend that point to all the other ones. So I've got this one. Let's say if I made it blue. You can see now with that one selected, it's going to blend from there to there. And no matter what color you have, it's going to try to blend it <coughs> together. Ah, see I've got a little vector point. It's starting to, uh, there we go. It's got a Bezier handle. You can see how it's not blending? Well, I see this one is not acting right. Wow, it's really off. Let's move these around. The downside with the gradient mesh is you've got to learn how to play around with it to, to work. What? Which one is that? I've never had this little problem. Oh, there we go. It's that one right there. You will have to go through and kind of correct a couple of things. Much better. Because it's automatically adding things that you may or may not want. But no worries, y'all know how to handle the vectors now. We'll work with that. But you get the idea. You can select individual points and change the color. You can even click on the inside of an area. So let's say I wanted all of this to be a specific color. Change it and it will gradient from those into the other little quadrants that we're working from. The fun part about this is, when I deselect it, you see how it's nice and blending together. This is what's happening when you saw the different examples that I showed you. They're looking at the object and your gradient from one color area into the other. And you're moving them around based on what you need. And that's what you're seeing with this. As detailed as you want it to be, or as not so detailed, all that's doing is changing one color value to the other. So if you really wanted to make a nice um, photorealistic vector picture of yourself, make one of your face and break it up into shapes. Here's the next part. How do we make the mesh match up with the colors of the picture? What I need to see is the outline of my mesh. To do this, you can go to View and hit Outline. You may have accidentally hit Command Y and it looks something like this. This shows me where all of my vector lines and vector points are, and I can easily click on them. <clears throat> Notice, however, I'm also losing my image. Look in your layers palette. Usually you have little eyeball icons right here. Well, the eyeballs are now just outlines. If you hold down Command and click on them, in this case layer 1, now I can see layer 1 and I've got the outline on layer 2. So now I can work between both of them. So this is what we're going to do. You're going to go through each one Select the point, then grab your eyedropper tool and click on a color that's near that point. So in this case, right about there. Then go to the next point and get your eyedropper tool, select one that's near this one. 
And what you're going to do is colorize each individual point. Here's a great tip to know. Notice that I've been using my eyedropper and my direct selection tool. If I hold down my command key, it'll swap back and forth between those two tools. So command, click on it, let go, and I can select. Command, click, and select. Let me do just a quick side of it. So all I'm doing is selecting the point and then selecting a color that's near, nearby it. You do need to do the outer points as well, so don't, don't want to neglect these. These are all part of it. Let's see how well this works. Click, 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 click. Let's see how that one looked. So I've got the outline here. Hold down Command. Click on the eyeball. And this is what I've gotten so far. I'll even turn off my background. Pretty close. It's got that little highlight right there. You can see that's the point at which it's gradiating out. It's starting to get the shadows. The more shadows that I put down on this edge and the highlights on the other side, it'll blend together much, much more. Once you get the basic outline of the shape you're working on, you still want to be able to tweak it. Like I showed you before, this one obviously was a little bit of a, a trouble, so I need to, to move it around. If I wanted this shape to be a lot smaller, because I know that highlight isn't that much, I can move these vector points up and maybe make that highlight be a little bit smaller from there. Move that around. When I deselect it, you can see now it's got a nice small little highlight. Here's another great tool to know about. If you want to add a row or a column of, um, of gradient points, you can use the gradient mesh tool. It's located right next to the gradient tool, the mesh tool. With this one, I can click anywhere in here and add rows and columns. So if I clicked on this particular row just once, now I've added more along this side. So if I needed more shadow details on this side, I could do that. If I wanted more at the top, I can click on that and it would start adding a row to it as well. I would still have to go back in and uh, make sure the colors were correct. But it, again, I can add as much detail as I want. If you click in the center of it, it'll add both a row and a column to wherever you're at. You would then move it around, make sure the colors are correct, and work through it that way. Once you get your entire area filled up, it'll look something like this. And so you can see I've got all the little areas filled in. I then went back and did the smaller areas. So in this case, this point in the back and also the stem that I'm working with. For the stem, I didn't really use a gradient mesh. A simple gradient was really all I needed to uh, achieve that effect. But you can see the background I added a little bit of a gradient mesh and started playing around with that one as well. All cool? Any questions about that part? Easy, easy. It's just something that once you jump into it, it'll, be, uh, it'll flow naturally. You just got to work through it to do that. Let me show you two more things to make it uh, go a little faster. Let's say you had a highlight that you wanted to be in one specific spot, but you just weren't able to get it looking perfect, uh, perfect in that spot. So let's say I wanted to add this particular highlight. I'm going to grab my pencil tool. I'll set my fill color to be, I'll make it solid white. I'm just going to quickly draw off that area. So I've got that area selected, got a nice object. I'm going to let that be my highlight area, but what I want to do is to make the edges very, very fuzzy so it blends well with my apple. If I just put it on there right now, that doesn't really look, look too hot. Let's see if I can make it a little bit more fuzzy. To do this, we're going to use an effect. At the very top, under Effect, Stylize, the one I like to use is the Feather effect. This will feather out those edges, give you a very, very soft edge to pull from. It does have a dialog box. We'll turn on preview. And this is where we're going to play around. The radius right now is in inches. Let's make it smaller. There we go. A uh, tenth of an inch will give me that little bit of a gradient to pull from. If I made it even smaller, let's say a hundredth of an inch. Click on it. We'll turn on and off preview. Not enough to really see it. Let's even get half that. So you can see how it's feathering just a little bit. Maybe it does need to be tenth of an inch. When we say okay, we got it. Now I've got a highlight that I that would blend a lot better and I can place it specifically where I want it to be within my uh, within my my work. 
This one would work great if you're doing the pepper. So you've got all these great little highlights. You can draw those off, use the gradient feather, and place them exactly where you need to be. Don't have to worry about making a mesh to line up exactly where that is. You can draw it in from there. All good? We had one difficulty with one of them, so I want to uh, give you all fair warning about the watermelon. That darn watermelon, it is so difficult. <clears throat> Let's drag this one into Illustrator and show you what I mean. Uh, there we are. With the watermelon, <coughs> it looks so unassuming. Here's, here's my advice for this one. Don't try to do a gradient mesh for all of the little lines that are on here. You'll never get it looking perfect. There's just no way. It's just way too detailed. Instead, go back and add the lines as a, uh, as a brush stroke. Remember, you've got paint brushes, so if I was to draw it off, I'm just going to draw a basic line through here. And if I open up my brushes, it's probably not going to show my default. Where are they? There they are. You've got these artistic brushes that would mimic, say, charcoal. Charcoal is really, really close to it, and this will give you that texture that you're looking for for that one. You could then change up the color of your fill color. See if it'll work. Yeah, you go. Not orange. To match the color of the melon. For the gradient mesh, I would make a circle that matches the, uh, the darker gradient on here. So it gets lighter up here and then gets darker down underneath then draw the lines and add those on top of it. Y'all tracking with me? All good? Any questions about this particular project? All right. Want to see how well y'all can do this. Remember, you only have to do three. This will be due at the beginning of class next, um, next Tuesday. If you want 10 points bonus, do the other two and upload those as a separate file. Remember, completely separate, just one at a time. I'll turn your computer back over to y'all and let y'all get started.